Well, hello, creatives, community, and kind folks, and also uh, co-hosts as well. Uh, welcome to RPG with DBJ. I am your host, DBJ, and today, as always, we talk all things tabletop role-playing games, but we like to be a little bit more specific than just anything tabletop role-playing games. So today we're going to talk about, and actually this whole week, we're getting back into our usual system where we where we discuss things uh, Monster Monday, uh, Trope Tuesday, World Building Wednesday, uh, Third Pillar of Exploration Thursday, and of course, Future Friday. And this week we're going to talk about uh, light and darkness. And maybe, just maybe, we're underselling it, the the dangers, the horror, and even some of the fantastical elements of, you, you know, uh, purity and brightness and evil and darkness within our role-playing games. And maybe bring, bring back some of the magic that that has uh, for her games itself. So, guys, I'm DBJ, and thank you very much for being here. Of course, we go live on uh, Twitch, YouTube, and even Facebook. And you can uh, participate there. And we also have our own Discord server if you'd like to communicate with other brilliant and uh, creative individuals like yourselves. And also, you know, those other platforms, it's very difficult or impossible to drop a link or a photograph or a pic or something like that, or even a, a link to one of your Google Docs or something. And it's far better to do that within a community um, by joining our Discord. So let's get on into it. So we're going to talk about, so this week, Hey, hey, hey. This week we are talking uh, light and darkness and developing some of the, and even twisting on some of the the tropes that we know of, and maybe looking at some of the undersold elements of light and darkness, especially in Dungeons and Dragons and other role-playing games. And this came about, uh, this thought came to me because uh, I do have a document that I'm working on that you guys are going to help me uh, crowdsource in terms of finding background information on creating a, a tabletop role-playing game supplement. And uh, as I was going through a f couple of details here and there and looking at the document, I didn't want to get too far into it without some some input from you guys. And it made me think about, uh, like, you know, we love ourselves some post-apocalyptic fallen empires and, and destroyed societies and people living on the outskirts. And how much, you know, light and darkness is such a uh, such an important element when it comes to every other mode of media in telling a story, and yet we really don't delve far into it in the role playing games. Um, <laughs> yeah, like Mike says, uh, well. You know, the beginning obvious choice is the shadow as well as any variant of that. Uh, shadows is, is a very, uh, what would you say? A, it's one of the few staple uh, monsters in Dungeons and Dragons. The shadow and, of course, shadow demons. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Like like Dead Man says, uh, you know, a light angel and a shadow demon. And they're very... Uh, very intrinsic to the idea of light being pure and good and, and shadows and darkness being being evil and creeping around. But, um, hey, Gaster, what's going on there? Yeah, it has been a while. <laughs> uh, glad to always have you back. Like Mike, Mike Gould says, uh, sight is so integral to understanding the environment that either removing all light and enforcing too much light have the same effect, blindness. And, all, and I... I Absolutely agree, and I think even this came. Up, this also came about because I was listening to a podcast. I believe it's the um the Tome Show or something, and they're reading the Dungeon Master's Guide, going chapter by chapter, and uh, well, at them and Questing Beast is reading the original. AD and D uh, Dungeon Master's Guide and and Tome the Tome Show they they were reading the Dungeon Master's Guide from first edition all the way up till now and they're in the fifth edition and one of the things I think that we undersell is darkness itself and I understand the first thing that people are going to do is roll their eyes and go well like what is it a good seventy eight percent of all character options for racial types or racial variations. Uh, uh, heritages, et cetera, et cetera, have dark vision. And so the minute the word dark vision comes up, everyone just goes, well, okay, you can just see in the dark. And actually that's not the rule. The rule is you get your perception is either minus five or you have disadvantage on all your perception checks. And it's dim in, in 
it looks like dim light. And in pure darkness with dark vision, everything is in black and white. And I think maybe we don't we don't um, get into that. Ooh, Tesla brings up uh, Cloak and Dagger. That's a classic group of characters that very, including myself, don't know much about. But in, um, they have a little, a, a bit of a weird relationship, I think. <laughs> Dead Man says, or mix it up. Uh, Shadow Angel and a Light Demon. I, I, I would go for that. I, I would go for that. Oh, yeah. No can do. Yeah. Um, Mike says, the shadow goes way back. And like the Intellect Devourer can kill without doing a single hit point of damage. <sighs> yeah, yep. <yeah. laughs> Mike and I are the same page because I don't know if you guys realize this. But like the Intellect Devourer, the Shadow, I'm surprised this isn't done more often in Dungeons and Dragons with some other monsters, that Shadows actually drain strength. They actually drain the strength attribute. They, they drain that stat, and when your strength goes to zero, you're dead. And I'm surprised there aren't more monsters that do similar, that attack uh asymmetrically uh go after a resource that many of us don't consider to be a resource in, in the first place gaster two souls has shadows now i feel now i feel it's been used a lot so i made something the light bleeders golems made of pure light when they were when they're to stab a player with their glowing blades because the character veins glow and then kaboom they explode uh you're i guess you're referring to like maybe as they stab a person, they begin to glow from the inside. I don't know. Um, we we start on a document, which I'm going to call it pretty soon now. Uh, we start. We talked about like crystal golems glowing with light and such, and I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, Mike says uh, people who bitch about dark vision do not understand dark vision. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk. Listen, we're going to talk about it later on in the week. But but uh, a side note: if you see in black and white and you see fluid in front of you. What is the fluid? Is it is it a an ooze or like like a gray? Was it gray ooze or a black pudding? Maybe it's blood, boiling water, frozen, uh, uh, ice cold. Maybe it's uh, oil and slick or flammable. Unless you unless you smell it or taste it, you don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those who dump strength shall die by the shadow. Ancient Elvish proverb. <laughs> That'd be awesome. All right, so um, uh, forgive me, guys. I am going to call up this document here that we're that we've been working on, and this is this is part of a a um, this part of the the crowdsourcing. I'm help you guys are going to help me with, and in the beginning, here we go with the blazing blazing light and sunlight, and we were kind of referring a lot to like dark sun in this, but I decided to pull out a little, a few details to make it far more light based rather than sun based and, um, and added a couple of details in the beginning here. Let, let me, let me page further up into the document a little bit. Um, I added a few, uh, I added a, a few comments and things like that. We started out with talking about worms and just to spark some creativity because eventually this is going to be broken up and expanded upon. And then maybe I might hand out like one to 200 word ex, you know, exposition to explain some of this, but I, I thought it would be kind of cool to, to flip like light and darkness on its head where maybe people are in the, in the culture are so afraid of things out in the light that they embrace the darkness or that there are dangers in the dark that are so that are so lethal that you have to spread yourself around with with light itself. So anyway, that's what I, that's just part of it. And I I always pick an image or something like that to give us a little bit of a uh, incentive. So getting back into the chat, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. If you want to make players, Mike says, if you want to make players panic, cast Hunger of Hadar, trapped in pure darkness, reduced in speed. You know, taking cold damage and being licked by acidic tentacles. When you do so, remove the <laughs> remove the map to mimic the darkness. You know there are uh, there are a number of uh, VTTs, uh, virtual tabletops that uh, 
that include the fog of, of war. Essentially, they give you that that cone that your token can see, and you, and unless you poke your head around the corner, the entire the rest of the map is blacked out because you can't see that much around yourself. And I think that's pretty cool, except for the fact that the, it does dangle in front of your players, like it it hints at a map they can't see which might make them keep jumping the gun to keep moving around the map that you want in the virtual tabletop. Unless you, you have a hard and fast rule, like don't move your tokens. Let me describe what you see first where you start like, you know, running around the the place. But uh, I, which I do love, I do love the idea of, of a virtual tabletop that only gives you a cone of sight fate, you know, based on your facing. I, I love that a lot, but one, um, one thing that, that, for example, in role-playing games, we've seen this plenty of time where a person is camping out and they're surrounded by like wolves or a bear or something. And, and the first thing they do, is they grab a torch and they hold up the light or the campers are inside of a, of a light dome because of the fire that they've created. And outside that light dome are, you know, things in the shadows. Maybe their their eyes reflecting the light and it makes their eyes look orange or red or something. And there's no rule that states that if you pick up a flaming torch, it'll keep back hungry wolves. But we we know that narratively that actually works. A lot of a lot of wild animals are afraid of fire and the light. And we use that. And I think maybe we don't do we don't use it enough to differentiate between the light and the darkness um even even doing something as simple as as in the game there are certain abilities that require us to to be able to see a target in order to target them and make them a target you have to be able to see something in in the dark woods to target it with a spell or your arrows you have to be able to see your ally to target them with your healing word or something of that nature uh i i don't know I don't think it's healing word or so, but whatever the case might be, um, whether you can see your target, whether they can hear you, um, those are pretty important. And I think if we, if we modulate the light and darkness uh, within the game, and it can be difficult with theater of the mind, but I still think it's possible if we talk in zones to have players like the ranger and a rogue that leave the party. And then the cleric is like, I have no idea where you're at, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Pitch black. Here we go. But, um, all right, Mike says players, players who rush to expose the map then expose themselves to ambush. Which, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, there's a lot of players that want to jump the gun. You're like, I don't care, DM, that you're describing what's in front of me. I'm going to poke around the corner, and you're like, okay, you decide to do it. <laughs> That's your fault. Yeah, you expose yourself. Uh, like Mufa says, while running my Star Wars game. In Foundry uh, Virtual Tabletop, I set the lighting and vision so they only had narrow cones of light in one direction, simulating their flashlights. Exactly. Nice scare when they got ambushed from multiple directions. Um, you know what? I And I wish I was a, 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 a savant of virtual tabletops. I would love to be able to do that. And, and for a short time, I don't know if you guys remember, I kind of had an agreement with Fantasy Grounds. And I was hoping to have a, a, a co-host who could do the virtual table topping behind the scenes uh, visually while I talked, but it never it never quite worked out. So we we, we separated our agreement. But it, it was a f- Fantasy Grounds College, not Fantasy Grounds themselves, but Fantasy Grounds College. It's a separate institution, but they're they're like they're like cousins or siblings or something. But yeah, um, but I love that idea, especially in like sci-fi, sci-fi with the I mean, how many times have we seen the flickering fluorescent tubes, even though we know like, and, you know, in the future, they'd probably be um, LED lights, but whatever the case might be, you, you know, um, dark, damp, you know, urine smelling basements with flickering uh, fluorescent tubing as you're being wheeled on a, a rickety cart as you're strapped down in some kind of like mental institution or something. It, th- th- I mean, that's, that's the whole point of it. I love it. Uh, Michael says pitch black touched on the, on the point of light in the darkness doing this can attract certain predators. Yep. I can, uh, I can imagine undead specifically targeting those that carry light. Uh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Conversely, one could make fantastic angels who think they are purifying the world with searing light and heat, forcing others to hide in darkness. A boat, uh, always on the same page. Both of those to me, both of those uh, concepts to me are really, like I love the both concepts of those. And, and the idea that either the, somehow, like of course if you, with angels is a perfect, idea to have like this conflict between you know the angelic hosts and and demonic fiends and uh, the hordes of them and then the people trying to escape the light or you know you you have the uh, the idea of proctors right where um stand in a pure light that you have nothing to worry about except no human being is pure so literally everybody's going to die from it or or be punished or what have you and uh like in in the movie pitch black what a great concept you know b movie sure but it, in in the in the tele i mean television show in the movie concept of pitch black you have these you know space people and a criminal vin diesel uh the, the rest of the series didn't work out very well, but I think he really encapsulated that character. And here's this here's this person who's a criminal, and they land on this planet, and it's got I think it's got multiple suns. And when each of the suns set, the planet turns into into total blackness, darkness. There's no light at all, and the few light sources they have are going to run out. And the monsters, the, the beasts that live in this planet, hide from the blazing sun. But when the sun goes down, poof, they come out in 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 droves, and I think that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, like Mike said, uh, like this makes a world that's not post apocalyptic, it's actually an apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, it's like everyone's like, it's post apocalyptic. Like, nope, listen, the apocalypse hasn't ended yet, it's only post when it's over and we get to start, to start all over again. You look up in the sky, you see like angels descending from, from the heavens, you're like, yeah, it's not over yet. Yep. Oh man. Dead man says Diablo three's expansion Reaper of souls did that with an angel becoming an embodiment of death. And we listen, we're, we're brilliant enough to know that the descriptions of angels, the actual physical descriptions of angels in religious texts are horrific. Not the, not the, the androgynous looking beautiful, golden skinned people with one set of wings. Oh, no, 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 no. The, if you could do, you could do a couple of um, Google searches and there are artists that have tried to render out the imagery of the actual descriptions of angels. And most of them are like animal headed with multiple sets of wings and, and, and bodies that are twisted. It's pretty, it's pretty nasty stuff. And I love it. Uh, Polaris says, don't go out in the day. You can see them, sure, but they can see you, and you won't stand a chance when they do. I wonder, okay, here's another weird, this is a, a little childish thing, but um, at small, sometimes small children will defend themselves from scary things by, like, hiding in the dark or closing their eyes, assuming that if they can't see it, you can't be seen. Wouldn't it be pretty interesting to have insanely dangerous enemies after the PCs, but if the PCs are in total darkness, meaning that, or they're blinded, like they cannot see that the thing that's going after them can't see them. Uh, almost as if, I guess you could, you could relate this to something illusionary or, 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 you know, very arcane that, yeah, the 37 pit fiends that are surrounding you as long as you close your eyes they don't exist <laughs> but you're going to have to navigate by you know on your hands hands and knees to try to get around some place that's da dangerous in itself the dead man says like in bird box yep like i i know bird box gets blasted you know but i think it's a great concept uh e even even with with bird box and we talked about it on the, on this channel before with bird box Who's to say that each PC doesn't see the only thing that they fear, but the thing that they fear, because in, if you don't know the concept of Bird Box, it's the opposite of a quiet, play, quiet place. You, it's not that you don't want to make noise, but you don't want to see the evil thing that has been exposed. And if you see it, it drives you, it drives you insane. And, and it's very 
the characters, each character sees something different that is their true horror. And that'd be kind of cool to have a couple of like a couple of five or six stat blocks. And you're like, all right, what, what do you hate? Do you hate insects? All right. It's a giant blah, blah, you know, do you hate fire? All right. It's a fire elemental. <laughs> so on and so forth. And I, I love that. Uh, I love that uh, concept P where, you know, you, you don't want to be seen by it, but also it, because it can see you and, you know, needing to, to navigate. Maybe there might even be uh, the opposite of oracles and seers. Uh, the, the, the stereotype of an oracle or seer is that they're blind, but they see everything. And maybe there are these people who walk around that are blinded, or maybe they blinded themselves. So, yeah, demons in the dark, angels in the light, and the survivors trapped in between. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, angels were like burning wheels and flying symbols, looking upon them as pure madness. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of like the 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 imagery of of I'm going to say real angels, biblical angels. The descriptions that that are given are are not humanoid at all. Or if they have humanoid elements, it's like multiple eyes, multiple limbs. You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> carrying things in their hands that are like nearly impossible to carry. Like, Oh, they're carrying a, a staff of blazing light in one hand. And they're also carrying a sword of fire in the other hand. And Oh, don't, don't worry about it. In their third hand, they're carrying a book of all your sins. And you're just like, what? Yeah. 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 Mufa says, reminds me of the ghosts from Mario that stop moving when you look at them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And um, man, I, I guess I should have described this more, at one point, I was going to do a, an episode of monster limitations that basically scare the shit out of us. And I was going to do that. I think this kind of fits into it. And what I mean by that is um, re referencing like when Dead Man brought up Bird Box and all the things you guys are talking about, a pitch black and whatnot, how much a limitation that normally seems like, oh, that makes these monsters less scary, makes them more scary. And the idea would be like a monster that only detects movement. And if you stand still, it can't see you, a la uh, Pitch Black. A, uh, a, a monster that, you know, if you're carrying light, like a torch or a flashlight or something, it wants to get rid of the light because it's searing, somehow it sears its flesh or it's attracted to it or something. And so now you have to navigate in the darkness to get around them. And maybe there's a horde of them and they could care less that you're touching them. But once you once you strike a match or or create any kind of light, because you now you need to read or, or find something in your backpack, they can see you. And there's something about a... a a creature that has a sense that is not reliant on sight, but does some other kind of way of detecting us that just seems very harmful, um, uh, harmful and fearful and lethal, and it's just horrific or something. Even uh, despite the fact that the movie was oof, um, after Earth, the Will Smith and and his son uh, Jaden movie where. There are the, the, the concept, terrible execution, great concept, right? We've talked about uh, terrible execution, great, great concept movies. And After Earth is one of them in which humanity becomes colonists. They go to another world and there are these dangerous beasts that are there and they are go into a, a frenzy when they smell the pheromones of human beings that are afraid. And in order to consume the human beings, the monsters will call, they, they are terrorists amongst humanity by like stringing, you know, taking the humans and impaling them on spikes and stuff to get other people to be scared, causing their fear to rise up. Then they can smell their pheromones and boom, they go after them again. And I, 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 I like that. Mm -mm -mm. You guys are re making a reference to sort of Mario games, uh, if they, what's the comment? They can't move if you look at them. The episode is called Blink. Don't blink. Blink and you're dead. They are fast, faster than you can believe. 
Ooh, don't blink. <laughs> uh, try to keep your eyes open. All right, so let me get into the into the document a little bit. And uh, f- under darkness, I put raining darkness just because I needed something flavorful to add in here. Um, and let's put in for um, I'm going to put in pitch black. I'm going to type in pitch black. Um, I don't, what would you call? Um, shadow beasts. I'm just going to put shadow beasts. Uh, just just to put them in as as uh, antagonists or something like that. Dangers. I'll, of course, we have to have pure darkness. Cannot be pierced with dark vision seems seems like a like a a gotcha but maybe we could throw something in there like that uh, or maybe even something like yeah if it can uh we need to put that under adversaries uh the put that in here if it can see you uh no, if you can see it, it can see you. If uh, you can see it, it can see you. All right. Anyway, um, just do the... Uh, 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 okay, let's see what the co-hosts have to say. They attack anyone who sees them. mm 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 It's, oh, you, oh, what's the term? God, I can't remember. Um, uh, uh, there's a children's thing about you. You want to be seen, not heard. Kids should be seen, not heard. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my, my my mind went down a went down a um, a funnel. <laughs> I, I'm back. <laughs> uh, Michael says, "Forgive the 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 adjective, but and I hope it, the entire comment shows up." Okay, here it is. But having nothing but pure destruction in the light or darkness is bleak. Possible to have both factions of angels and demons with which the PCs can negotiate. I uh, I, I think absolutely. I think something like. You know, because because the idea of fallen angels is that they are no longer uh, they are no longer true to their instructions, their orders, and so you, you know they want to rebel. So I think something like um, the I'm going to put angel versus demon uh, war is a lie question mark maybe not a lie but maybe it's not as you, you know um actions are not as as um hard lined over time so maybe there are like 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 any human being that engages in like war and battle over a long time, maybe there's something about it. Like, why are we fighting each other? Like, what's the point? Or, or maybe people just get tired. Ooh, Pelora says, so a demon of pride, for example, if you look at it, it will kill you. Maybe, um, what are the seven dead? Okay. Um, seven, seven virtues and sins. Virtues and sins. All right, let's look that up. Let's get some images. Mm, is that a good one? Can you seven deadly sins? Oh, those are the symbols. We want, no, we want to get imagery. Temperance. Diligence. Maybe this will show up better. 
Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's expand this out just a little bit more. Now, come on, image. Now, I got to go back and use this one. All right, and let me share this out. Do, 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 do. Let's get this Chrome tab here, Seven Sins. Let's see if this will work. It's hard for you guys to see it. Yeah, it's very hard for you guys to see it. Okay, and let me go to this page. I'm not sure if you if you can visually see this over my shoulder. Oh, oh, it's not letting me. Come on, switch on over. Switch over here. Mm -mm. There it is. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do a little bit of sliding around. And even that was not big enough. Sorry. Okay. So it, <laughs> just to let you know. All right. So we have virtues and vices. And of course, we've got seven of them. And there's a chastity and lust, um, temperance and gluttony, charity versus greed, diligence versus sloth, patience versus wrath, kindness versus envy, and humility versus pride. And that's what they have listed. And now we know, you, you know, chastity versus lust, you, you know, this, this, the incubus succubus is the, is the opposite of one and chastity may be the other. But I could imagine an angel being uh, wanting to punish humanity just for having any kind of, of a sexual desire for somebody else of any type, including maybe even including the, the person that, that maybe in the future they would like to betroth themselves to. But right now they're just like, no, we're just going to have some fun. And it was like, and even if they're committed, it's like, no, the angels like hell no. Uh, temperance versus gluttony. You know, of course, maybe, you know, it's the idea, like a parent says to their kid, like uh, they're starving kids in Africa. And you're just like, yeah, but I can't send my meal there right now. I could see an angel uh, like forcing, you know, being pissed off at the PCs. They've, they've got extra, I don't know, rations in their bag or something. And they're like, well, we need the rations to get across this landscape. And the angel's like, no, you're giving up your rations now. What do you think you're doing? And they're like, uh, you you have the ability to cast Goodberry. <laughs> you're like, yeah, because we're, we're on a mission. And you're like... You're, you're sinning just by having that ability and not using it for everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Like Mike says, absolutes only exist in mathematics. Anonymous angel or demon. <laughs> Anonymous angel. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just picturing like a, like an angel or demon on their Insta putting up like a meme or something like that. Just something weird. Like type, 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 type. I'm going to send this hashtag out. Mm -mm -mm. Bunch of, uh, bunch of pit fiends and, and devas like besties and stuff children should be seen not heard as a proverb that's it thank you dead man yeah i it went through my head when when you guys talk about you know darkness and things like that and it, and it just popped in my head and i was like oh, what could we use with that or how could we use it there's a way to use it but my mind hasn't gotten there yet yeah pride greed wrath envy lust gluttony and sloth and i i've went down this rabbit hole. There's actually more related to that. Uh, if you wanted to go far with far more than seven deadly sins, because, you know, sins might be based on religion, depending on your religion. There are some sins that are, that, that there are some things that are considered, considered sins more than others. And yep, yep, yep. Yep. Tesla says the seven Christian heavenly virtues combine the four classical cardinal virtues of prudence, justice, temperance, and courage or fortitude with the, the with the three theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity. Yes, they do. And, and there are other religions and some people have actually made lists of, of what other world religions. And of course you could do this. We're in fantasy land, right? Where, uh, for example, a, a religion of, I don't know, 
an elemental god of fire or something might a sin might be putting out a fire of any type and you know a player that goes camping <laughs> might be like um guys don't let's not you know if you start the fire and someone goes to get a you know a bucket of sand or or pour their their water skin on top of it and you're like hell no don't do that and the druid's like you do realize we're going to burn the forest down if we leave it lit and and, and the, the religious character is like don't you you don't you won't want to do that so yeah it it's it's possible yes kitty yes Come on, pro- producer. Come on, have a seat right in your producer's chair. Come on. Mm-hmm, yeah. You're not on camera talent. You're the producer. Let me lift you up. Oh, my kitty. Yeah. All right, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, talking about the Jedi and the Sith. Yep, yep, yep. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. Yeah, <laughs> nobody's to point the finger at themselves. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Funny, 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 funny. All right. Uh, Tesla says the operative. Ooh, ooh, that's a old goodie, Grayson. The operative. Do you know what a sin is, Maul? Maul. Oh, hell, I'm a fan of all seven. <laughs> Headbutt. But right now, I'm going to have to go with Wrath. Serenity. Yeah, yeah. That's a, a, the, the operative. What a great villain, too. The operative who's like, yeah, I know I'm doing bad things and terrible things, but it's for a good reason. It's, it's, it's for, the, it's for the, the good of all. That's why I'm doing it. Like a person that really knows about that um, and really embraces that. And I think... Um, why is this not working? All right, let's go over here. Mm-mm-mm. Now, I think the the another thing to, to consider when we start talking about like uh, light and darkness and such might be the idea of going with. Um, oh, how do I say this? The <sighs> some things might be might actually be a physical danger like a vampire is going out in the sunlight or I don't know angels or something something that that is uh, given birth in light that suffers greatly from the dark um, we also know about the the psychological impact of it uh, human beings just being afraid of the dark we don't suffer harm in darkness but it's just a physical it, it's the sorry it's the psychological uh, idea of darkness it Darkness relates to the unknown. Being in the unknown makes us fearful. All anything that we fear is in the dark. And one thing that I think would be really cool, especially especially when we we get to Thursday, would be like. And I do realize that this kind of flows in with like a, an illusionary kind of thing. But if you fear something in the dark, what if that fear is the real? Th- for you becomes the real thing in the dark because you cannot see what it is. Meaning like, like, um, you know, a pitch black room has something in it and something slides against your skin. And then, you know, maybe the player characters asked like, um, like, well, you know, you asked the player character, okay, you have six materials that slide against your skin. What, what, what do you feel when you reach out and touch the thing, is it like, um, is it, does it smell musky and with thick fur and a, and a he, you know, heavily panting chest or is, are they uh, like scales from a snake or a dragon that slide against your flesh or, you know, is it slimy and, and thick and like a ooze and it feels warm, almost acidic to the touch or like, and these things might be real in the dark but once you turn the light on, it doesn't exist at all. You know, um, fears made real when unseen, something like that. Um, and then we, then I'm, we'll, we'll go back with where, how darkness might be a good thing as well. Uh, all right, co-host. Let's see. Mm-mm-mm. Idea. Okay. Those healed by a paladin's touch or some form of warlock infernal healing are temporarily 
beacons that attract the opposite side. I, I you know what? Could, um, Mike, you brought up this the you brought this up before about like if you cast so many spells, it becomes like a living spell. And I I think something like that would be really cool. Magic in in fifth edition or all editions of Dungeons and Dragons for the most part is an on-off switch. I either cast a spell or I don't. But I like the idea that that using magic causes something causes something else. Um the touch of healing slash cor- corruption is a beacon for the opposition. And I hate the way that's worded, but yeah, I could see that like a paladin's touch is like a like a beacon of purity for someone. And, and so um much like much like trying to heal the innocent, it's like, well, yeah, but you might not want to do that right now because all you're going to do it, it's what's the old game? Gauntlet, I believe it was, tag your it, uh the uh, overhead video game or something. The 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 minute you you got the power up or whatever it was, I, it's been a man, it's from the mid to late eighties. Anyway, um, yeah, sometimes you can be tagged, you're it. And if you're it, everything comes after you. <laughs> Kylie's like, uh, my big toe has suffered greatly in the dark. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think at one point, I think I broke a, uh, a little toe or something like that, smashing it into a chair leg or whatever, man, that hurt for like weeks. I never went to the doctor, just swole up. Then Mike says, well, the demons might have a stat block, but will look like a twisted form of whatever you fear. A- absolutely. Ab- absolutely. Like it's what, whatever the fear, whatever the fear, however that fear takes place, that's what it looks like. So yeah. Um, mm, 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 mm. I'm going to put that under sights. What you fear is what you see despite the stat block. I'm going to put that down. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm liking it. Um, mm, 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 mm. Might have to go page back up to see what do we have listed here under under light. Only the truth can be spoken under sensations, exposed body, mind, and soul. Celestial chorus, dancing lights everywhere, um, dowsers, blinded, um, carved out eyes because they are not worthy. Ooh, nasty, nasty. All right. Let's put this back here for the darkness. Um, hmm. Mike's is kind of like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, okay? What you're thinking about becomes the demon. <laughs> that movie's coming back, too. The, 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 uh, the trailer looks pretty good for the, the next Ghostbusters movie. But yes, yes. Like, I'm trying to think of the most... <laughs> Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, seriously? <laughs> Mofa says, one of the Lovecraft stories had invisible creatures that fill empty space and hate us because we destroy them when we breathe. A guy goes insane after learning about them. I forgot which story it was. Ooh, whisper, whispers in the darkness? Or whisper in the darkness? Ow. Yeah, you, yeah. The, the Lovecraftian stories, man, are all very, like... It's, they're all very much like, yeah, it doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> you, This is what you should not have ever learned. Because once you learn it, you're like, ah, shit. <laughs> I want to go back to being stupid. Mike says, um, an angels might take on the appearance of your greatest sin. Wrath might mean a body of screaming heads and blades. And lust might be a beautiful angel that charms you into walking into their weapons. Ooh. Ooh. I'm liking that. Okay, okay. Uh, 
let's see. I'll put that antagonist. Uh, nope, nope, nope. I'm going to put this up here. This is under light. There we go. Okay. Uh, number six. Here we go. Angels. Here. That's your. Your. Greatest. Sin. I'll put the. Seven deadly. Sins. Reference. <laughs> Off topic, okay? All right? Leave old movies alone. Some classics should just be left alone. Here's an idea. Hollywood, get a new idea. <laughs> hey, it's called it's called marketing, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, there people make new ideas. No one ever goes and sees them. That's the problem. I mean, we all want new ideas. It's just there's no money behind a new idea, and people don't – statistically, people don't see new ideas. They don't go for new ideas. That that would be like uh like um uh, it, it would be like creating a superhero movie not based on any any known property and hoping to make as much money as those properties and they won't. Now, mind you, you know, I, I think it's lazy, <laughs> but but they're they're going off of history, not going off of being forward moving, which is which sucks. You're just like, well, you know, well, if people don't do it, why don't you condition people to be better at, you know, looking for the thing that you want, right? Like, hey, well, if you made a lot of original, really good original movies, people would be like, hey, that, there's another original movie. I'll go for that one. And they they don't. <laughs> they don't at all. Um, all right. So I wonder if there's a way like, um, oh. You put under thing. This is something. Here's something that I don't understand that doesn't exist, and this this bothers me. These are things that bother me with fifth edition. That I'm surprised there aren't plugs for the holes that are in it um, that are very easily seen by the rest of us. And here, here let, let me make this point. Uh, there are things in the game that exist to accommodate something else in the game. But the thing that the other thing that it accommodates doesn't exist. Meaning, uh, my my first point would be the mending spell. The mending spell fixes broken things. But in fifth edition, there are ninety nine percent of the time, unless the dungeon master says you find something that is broken, player characters' items don't break because they actually say it in the rules that things carried by characters aren't harmed. Whereas in, I remember in AD&D, me and other players, they actually had rules where uh, items had like a breaking point. They had like an armor class and hit points. And and if you fell down in a pit, you'd have to roll for the three, you know, um, potions that were in your pocket and they might bust open. And if they did bust open, what effects would it have? They might mix together. Like we did all of that kind of stuff because we thought it was fun. Fifth edition actually specifically says that those things don't happen. So why do I mention the mending spell and things that aren't broken, but you have a mending spell? Uh, there, there's a lot of dark vision. There's nothing that counters dark vision that specifically makes dark vision a liability in certain situations, making it like, oh, well, if this one thing is ubiquitous. Maybe it's a dangerous thing to have it. So, for example, uh, so I'm going to put here in dangers. Um, uh, dark vision is dangerous when the unseeable, well, the unseen becomes noticed. Um, Remember, we were talking. We were talking like if it sees, if you can see it, it can see you. And maybe it's better to be blindfolded. And maybe it's better to like, hey, <laughs> maybe I don't want to. Maybe I don't want these creatures to see me because the minute you notice them, maybe they become real or whatever. Like, 
it's a weird thing of how perception makes reality. If you see everything, maybe you don't really want to have see everything. All right, let's get back into our co-hosts here. Uh, Mike says, this is starting to feel like Constantine, but in a good way. Asimar and Tieflings might not be half, not, might not be half the thing. Maybe they're just light and dark touched. Um, I always felt that they are best represented that way. That like a, a tiefling, a good tiefling might be someone like a, an exorcist that drew like a demonic entity out of an innocent person into their body. Or like an Asimar might be someone who was laid upon an altar, a small child, or someone who has given themselves to a, you know, a, a, a deity of goodness that, that hell, li- literally an angelic host comes down and touches them on the, on the forehead or kisses them on, on, you know, on each cheek or something and disappears. And now they are quote unquote Asimar. I, I like that. I, I've never really been one to like hold tight to what a race is. I mean, it's just, it's basically numbers and ke- player character capabilities, the origins really don't matter. Or rather, they don't matter mechanically, but they do matter narratively. And I like that idea. As a matter of fact, I, I would even, I, a way to make a character fall from grace might be to change their racial origin. For example, a noble knight that is an Asimar might become tiefling simply because they keep doing more and more heinous things, right? And that might just be a temporary change. You're being punished air quotes by the DM, but you still have similar capabilities. If you understand what you have um, capabilities and parity with everybody else. You haven't been yet. Things haven't been taken from you. They've been switched to something else. Uh, Polaris says, I'm, I'm with Mike with this one. Sometimes the story has been told and trying to strangle money out of it. Isn't doing it for me. <laughs> it's strangle money out of it. <laughs> like twisting, I'm just imagining twisting like a damp rag and just like trying to get that last drip of water. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're you're right. But man, movie studios don't want to make art, they want to make money. Originality often flops at the box office. It is very true. It it does happen. Yeah. The the confluence of art <laughs> and uh and and money makers is is where it's at and you can't get your thing made unless you've got the money to do it there's lots of brilliant people out there who will never make a movie because they can't get the money to do it uh mike says conversely dbj there's actual object ac and object hit points in dmg there are there are you can break doors and stone statues but somehow your weapon isn't into damage doing so <laughs> yeah somehow right i'm gonna take my sword and hack at that stone statue you're just like wait what what are you doing <laughs> Well, the game says anything I'm holding doesn't get damaged. You're just rolling your eyes like, oh, my God, here we go again. You know, um, so, yes, you, you yes, in fifth edition, you could very easily add in the idea of a dragon breathe fire on your character. Roll. R- let's let's see what kind of damage happens to all of your items. And for me, I I would find that fun in the sense of oh my god what am i going to lose there's i guarantee you there's a lot of players who are going to be like hell no i'm not playing this game if if my left boot and my cloak and one of my potions goes up in flame right yeah yeah and like mike says oozes used to ruin your weapons and armor yeah um Gaxian creatures, right? Gygaxian creatures the 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 rust monster uh gray oozes most most of the oozes most oozes. Yeah, Polaris says, the game says a meteor comes down and kills you all while you go and find a better table. <laughs> Shh, bang! <laughs> You're not leaving. I'm leaving now and taking all my favorite players. Ooh, please don't go. You know what I mean? I want you to stay. Okay, so um, I turning darkness into the good guy. Uh, good guy. You, you understand what I'm saying? Where darkness becomes the good thing. Um, I absolutely could see a world where bright lights are like the the light and is so bright 
it's blinding like the um i don't know if you guys have ever played as a kid where you take a, a super bright flashlight put it behind your your fingers or your ear or something and you can actually see the light actually flashes through your flesh and your skin and it looks kind of weird because you're like oh i can see my bones i don't know if that's really the case but but yeah the 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 light might be so bright that you need a place to, to hide so i'm going to put this um shelf shelters of darkness um hold back the blinding light so um people might have to travel maybe maybe there's a maybe the for some reason the sun nighttime is so rare that the sun, like the sun always gets up really high in the sky. It seems like it's high noon forever. And then it sets up for very short periods of time. And maybe that even, even if uh, darkness does extend, that's where everything is done. People try to get as much done in the dark as possible. And if I remember correctly, historians have said that mankind actually did a lot of stuff at night more than we thought we used to. But yeah. Uh, there's a lot of nocturnal animals. I'm going to put them um, nocturnal, nocturnal animals run rampant. Um, Ooh, I know. I know what we can put down as people. Let's call them. Let's call them. Uh, let's put the shroud. Uh, shrouded. Um, let's see, pilgrims that wander the light out, getting without being harmed. I'm just a pit. I'm I'm a, I'm imagining people who are like um, I don't know um, shrouded or cloaked. Maybe the cloaks kind of are like a combination, like a like a single person tent of some sort, like wide brimmed hats that have these shrouds that come down, and they maybe they wear like layers underneath it, so they have like a cloak on, and they have the thing over their face and and such, and uh, and and many of them get are like. <laughs> outright destroyed out there in the light but some of them you know the, the minute the light comes up they just basically crouch down and they sit there or something i'm just I, I'm, I'm picturing some kind of like a weird like they they seem to be otherworldly uh in a in a psychological sense maybe speaking in riddles or difficult to get their attention or maybe they look at at humanity like mm, you know you guys need to to get better because we're going to need to live in this light well, I have been tempted to meter strike a certain table's eye. <laughs> yeah. Pelora says, uh, deserts are bright. They're pretty dangerous during the day. Uh, they're, actually, you can go blind in a desert, if I'm not mistaken, uh, if, if that it could start to burn out your retinas. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. Deserts can be extremely bright. Uh, Pelora says, heat from the sun more than light itself, but the light uh, could also be blinding. I, I absolutely agree with you. And, and, of course, we're talking fantasy. Maybe the light literally is blinding, you know? Um, I wonder if there's a number of monsters we could reskin. Most monsters are like, are darkness enabled, right? They are, th shadows come to mind and shadow demons, of course, but most evil things crouch in the dark. I wonder if if we flip the script on some monsters, not, not necessarily angels, like would a light... I don't know what the opposite of a shadow would be, but uh, well, okay, let's go shadow demon. Uh, would the opposite of a shadow demon uh, conceptually be a thing? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Mike says people get as much done at night while they can. Yeah. Everyone's high school romance tactic brought to you by TVJ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We could get a lot of homework done. Mm -mm -mm. Michael says, like multiple layers of sheer cloth, so they can still see and breathe, like a like a mix of a burka and wide brim hat. Yes, I 
I think I've seen that type of of art before, and I don't know where my mind has seen this. Yes, very much like a combination of like a like a uh, Persian Middle Eastern burqa style outfit with a more of a um, Far East Asian wide hat thing. I've seen that pencil work before. I swear I have. Gargoyles, a Disney cartoon series, had creatures that turned into stone statues during the day. Ooh. Ooh. I wonder if, okay, okay. Um, I wonder if there's a way. Uh, okay. Um, follow me on this because I'm, I'm going down the Lady Hawk route here. Okay. So maybe there are. You, there are, and I'm going to talk slight mechanics here. Um, so, s challenge ratings, CR ratings, maybe we can rank them up really high. First to third level characters fighting like CR 10 plus monsters, knowing that if they time it right, that, that dusk dawn region between the light and the darkness or whatever, they can maneuver their way during these, uh, you know, between the shadow of an outcropping and the bright light of a sun, that if they maneuver in a particular way, the thing that goes after them goes into maybe like a hibernative state or actually vanishes or is burned or whatever the case might be to make them not dangerous by the PCs having to avoid one one thing to another. So an example, like like you're saying, like in gargoyles, the gargoyles turn to stone it during the day. Maybe the PCs can, like, maybe there's a big fight, or maybe they have to parlay at certain times of the day or night, knowing that they're going to go into a hibernative state during the other period of, of time. So a, 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 a being of light vanishes during darkness or something, or being of darkness can't step into the light. And and so on, and that would be kind of that'd be kind of a cool thing, like because the players might be on the run, and you you could very much time a thing where the players are like, okay, guys, we've got like an hour to get through this dungeon and and get the hell out of here, so that the things inside won't come after us, or the the thing that we are trying to, I don't know, I'm going to say Sphinx, but I'm that's just because I'm pulling something out of my ass, but like the Sphinx turns back in the stone during when it's hit by the first light of sun, we need to answer this riddle and get through this door before the Sphinx turns back in, into stone, in which case we're going to have to wait all day. And if we wait all day with the sun, you know, the sun rising high, there's no way we're going to get through it. So I'm, I'm, I'm imagining like a, like a built in tension timer where the tension starts to build from the timer of uh, uh, allies and adversaries and both the day cycle and night cycle or light cycle, dark cycle. If, if that cycle is thrown off by some kind of thing. Um, let's see. Uh, angels might ignore the shrouded because the shrouded clothing portrays humility to the angel. Yeah. Oh yeah. And now they, now of course, as a player character, player character is going to say, well, can I be a shrouded? And I guess my answer to that would be, uh, mechanically what kind of character are you creating like maybe a, a cleric must use channel divinity to to expose their purity but on or maybe like the sanctuary spell right if the, the sanctuary spell is is kind of this this if you fail the wisdom save you ignore the person and so these people are like natural sanctuaries unto themselves Kind of thing. I, I I don't know. I like I like the idea of like defending yourself against something using an asymmetrical ability to do so. Like, oh, I'm not just going to hit it with my sword. I'm going to bow my head and hope it doesn't hurt me, knowing that if I do the thing, there's a greater chance it won't. It'll just pass me by, right? And that would be pretty interesting. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Mike's like, if you Lady Hawk this, you're going to force me to dinosaur mama thing. <laughs> Lady Hawk. Yeah, I, I know. I, I know. I, I have fond memories of the movie. I haven't seen it in a while. It might not stand up. So maybe I won't ever watch it again. Maybe I'll just have keep my fond memories and leave it at that. 
But it was a Rutger Hauer movie. How bad could it be? Um, Mike <laughs> says, pure angels and pure demons might have the ability to affect the light touched and the dark touched. Pure angels might turn dark touch to stone during the day and light touch might me- might melt to demons. Yeah, that like that might be there uh, temporarily, that is. Yeah, that, that might be there. It's just kind of weird to say, but the the pure demons and the pure angels might also have the most limitations of affecting a thing. Like maybe there are angelic hosts that are like riding the fence and they, they you know, day, nighttime doesn't matter to them. But like the, the planetars and the solars in this war of, of light, uh, liter- you know, literally pure light against pure darkness, maybe they can't tolerate it or they, it's, the lower echelons must wipe away the darkness for them to step upon the earth itself or something like that. Like there might be a, an arachy to it, uh, like a, uh, levels to what they can do. You, you know, we, we, we don't, we don't, um, we don't corrupt ourselves by deigning ourselves to touch upon the darkness. That's for you to do, you lesser folk, <laughs> you know, render incapacitated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. There is a way to, let's see. Uh, I'm going to put this down as adversaries. Um, pure light and pure darkness. Um cannot mix and are temporarily did I spell it right? Oh wow <laughs> temporarily uh, um, incapacitated when they come into to con <laughs> the wording's terrible. <laughs> All right, let me turn this off. Uh, pure beings of one side or the other, or the other view the opposite side like nails on a chalkboard. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, or e- hmm. How interesting would it be also? Wonder. No, that wouldn't work. But one thing that went through my mind was what if they can't see each other? Like, um, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, somehow they they can't conceive of each other. They only conceive of each other through other mediums, like humanity. So an angel can't see a demon and a demon can't see an angel, on, except only through the eyes and the interactions of the people that deal with them. So I don't know, maybe that's a little too complicated, but I'm, I'm thinking of this idea of like, yeah, sure. The PCs could set them against each other, but they aren't against each other physically because they can't conceive of each other yet. They know they're there. They just can't interact until a certain, like a certain threshold is met or something. I don't know. Pelora says, what's been going through my head as a creature that light passes through making it invisible. And while the light is going through it, it is incorporeal, forcing you to fight it in darkness. Ooh, ooh, I'm liking that. I'm liking that a lot. Like, um, ooh, uh, let's put that down as, I'll put it down here. I'm gonna go, I'll put down as, as antagonists. Uh, let's see. Mm, 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 mm. Transitional stages based on light and darkness. And then an example, um, under light. Under light, the creature, uh, creature is uh, invisible. I know you can't see what I'm doing. Visible. Yeah. 
that would make a good reason for sorry about that guys um that would make a good reason for having like um so and and, and this this is a, actually a pretty cool mechanical uh way to reinforce social and exploration where an adversary is immaterial you can't you can't harm them they can't harm you during a certain period of time daylight for example right um maybe they're completely immaterial or or they are so they are so ephemeral as to only exist like kind of like on the wind and just in you know, slight shades as you try to hold your, you know, your eyes up to the sunlight or something, meaning that either side can't affect each other, but they sure can talk and parlay. But when the sun starts to go down, maybe that now adversary is like, listen, we, we've been yelling and, and arguing at each other, but when the sun goes down, you and I, and maybe the PCs use this opportunity to run, hide, find other allies, um, come up with a battle plan. Maybe they're being um, tracked by this thing, or maybe this this entity sends other agents at them at them that do have the ability to navigate during the daylight or darkness or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm liking that a lot. Hell, a creature in darkness might just be pure shadow in the literal sense, like you can't hit it, you can't touch it. It's just a, this this voice in the wind or something in the air in the darkness that breathes on the necks of the PCs. But when the sunlight comes up maybe this thing can step into the light or something. I don't know. That's kind of weird, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. <laughs> Nails on the chalkboard. Okay, guys, we're, we've gone pretty far with this. Um, thank you very much, by the way, for just uh, <laughs> just tolerating my my rants and and, and my desire to to um, just be creative and whatnot. I'm, I'm trying to, I, I dove head first into this. I didn't give it much thought. So me being distracted by like typing this and trying to show this and that on screen and all that kind of business, uh, I'll get better at it. Just, 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 just believe you me, I, I will try. Um, guys, thank you so much, everybody. Um, like, share, subscribe, spread the word if you'd like other people to be part of it. Um, if there's somebody you don't like, and you feel like the show is the kind of thing that will harm it? Um, please let them know that. Uh, five out of four doctors say this is uh, this is uh, <laughs> the best channel for such things. Yeah, right, Eternal, shiny and bright. Wait, oh no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Muso black, black three in the mouth. Uh, if, if you don't know, there is a um, there there is a underground war going on with who can make the blackest black paint in the world. And it's pretty interesting. Uh, if you're a geek, <laughs> it's pretty interesting. I think there's a, there's a color called Muso black that, um, that's pretty fun. Thank you, Kylie. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Palora. Thank you, Pete all the time. Guys have a great one. I hasta la pasta. Ooh, that sounds pretty good for tonight. <laughs> have a great one.